Hello, Virtual English 2. Today, we, this is day two of us reading Wyatt Walker by Malcolm Gladwell. Keep in mind, we're reading Wyatt Walker to see what the seeds of Langston Hughes poetry would flourish into a few years later, a few decades later. Hughes wrote the poems in mostly the 20s into the 30s and 40s. He was still alive during this time and writing poetry, but the poems that we are going to be examining were written during that time period that would then flourish into the Birmingham March, which we are currently reading about here with Wyatt Walker. So we read uh, to section five on page 178 today. Uh, we'll pro so here's how things are gonna probably go. Uh, annotations are currently still due on Thursday. If we get done with the section tomorrow on Thursday, I think we should, if not, I'll just push it back to, I'll reassign it to a Friday. We will get done with this by the end of Friday. And I also have assignment that in another video I'll be explaining here later, or I guess to you, you see it, whenever you see it, I'll explain that, that assignment that will be due on Sunday. So anywho, uh, let's talk about what we kind of talked about in class while reading Wyatt Walker. So I'm going to pull up Wyatt Walker. All right. So as remember, we kind of started off here at the beginning where Malcolm Gladwell asks us to focus in on a picture because he says a very important picture because it was a picture that uh, helped pass the civil rights move that this picture right here helped pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This picture right here resulted in that. So we focused on that because that was an important picture and then we moved to that. Then we meet our protagonist and our antagonist. Our protagonist, of course, uh, the protagonist, once again, is just the main character. It doesn't does mean good guy or bad guy. Protagonist, main character, antagonist, person standing away of the main character. And we meet Martin Luther King, who is our protagonist. He is in a point of crisis. He has failed a little bit going into, uh, he's failed a little bit here at the beginning of the, uh, of the story and he's just at the point where he needs a win and he's desperate and he goes to the most racist city in america birmingham so i'm going to take a pause for a second and kind of talk about some things that uh these uh books right here help kind of highlight and talk about uh when it talks when it comes to talking about race uh, certain ethnicities, certain races are used to being grouped into an entire, uh, into as a representative of their entire race, while others are not as comfortable. Uh, specifically, uh, most of the time, it's uh, people who are white are not used to being lumped into the overall uh, collection of white people. So uh, the thing you got to keep in mind is that yes, Birmingham was a really racist city, and there's like a, a lot of examples that help support it being racist. But uh, not every white person in Birmingham was a racist. Most white people are not used to being grouped in like that. But once you realize that whenever someone says white people or when someone says police, they're not talking about the individual white person. They're talking about the collective uh, race. So, yes, you might not be that white person or you might not be that person, but that we're talking about the collective. So, and if you, once you can figure out that the collective and you are not the same, then we can get a, it's a lot easier to discuss things with, which involve race. And so, yes, Birmingham, not everybody in Birmingham was racist. Not every cop in Birmingham did these horrible racist things that the cops are being described as doing, but we're talking about the general, not the individual. So uh, yes, Birmingham was a very dangerous place. Uh, if you're a black and you moved into the wrong neighborhood and into the white into a white neighborhood, the KKK would bomb your house. Uh, officers would go out and shoot black people in order to keep a crime wave down just all willy nilly. So it was not a good place to be. But King needed to go there because that is where Bull Connor, our antagonist, was. Bull Connor is our antagonist. He's the person standing in the way of King from accomplishing his goal. And there's plenty of examples of how racist bull connor is if you just want to read right here uh in fact king didn't even know if he'd come back alive uh in fact he gave like those mock eulogies and this is where we picked up and this is where we start to emphasize where malcolm gladwell starts playing the idea of david and goliath and how african americans are david in this particular situation uh, so he teaches us a history lesson within this history lesson by talking about burr rabbit the trickster rabbit and so the trickster hero is a, is a, an archetype of a hero that is not necessarily the strongest, able to use their wits and outsmart the people, outsmart people in order to get their way. And we see that with these both of these examples of uh, Burr Rabbit, who is 
who uses reverse like in order to get what he needs. And I'd recommend lo looking into the, both these examples so you can get exactly what the point is trying to be brought across. And uh, if we go on forward here on 172, I want us to talk about this right here. This right here is an interesting thing. For, let me talk to you about like the textual structure of what we're looking at. This is a thing called a block quote. In order to uh, block quotes or quotes that usually exceed 20 words. And they all, if you notice, they're not in quotation. In order to start a block quote, you're going to use a colon and going to indent and use justified text to kind of offset the block quote itself. And this block quote ha uh, has very interesting information. Uh, let's talk about real quick about stereotypes. Stereotypes often are false, as we are, as most of you are aware. They're just false information about general groups of people that uh, are usually out, out there in the open. This right here is the root to one of the false stereotypes that are associated with African Americans. This is how that stereotype began and was perpetuated and so right here will inform you about how that uh, developed. The next one is to focus on real fast as we continue this right here I uh, glad will refer to that happened earlier in this book because it, remember it's a collection of stories and he comes down to why MLK and the other uh, leaders of the civil rights movement and African the African American community are David. Uh, which, which in this line right here, the lesson of the trickster tells is in the third desirable difficulty, the unexpected freedom that comes from having to lose the trickster gets to break all the rules. So if the rules are been against you win anyway, if there's no way the rules will let you win, you get the freedom of breaking them. And that's kind of what King and Wyatt Walker do. And that's where we meet Wyatt Walker. And right here is a very interesting combination of paragraphs right here that allow, like I want you all to focus in on these and I want you to think about these two paragraphs right here and then I want you to back up here to this particular photo. Uh, like those two paragraphs kind of help us understand this photo a little bit better. Uh, where are we? Right here. Then we learn about Wyatt Walker. Uh, one thing, another thing I need to talk about is foils. Foils are supporting characters that help highlight things within the protagonist, within the character, usually by contrast. And Wyatt Walker is a character that allows us to see stuff in Martin Luther King uh, through, uh, through demonstrating a contrast. He does that right here is an example. Uh, this is King's example. And then we have a contrast right here of how him and Walker are different so we can see something within King right there. And then the same thing is right here where we have a contrast between the two characters and we understand an aspect of Martin Luther King a little bit better based on the contradiction that Wyatt Walker presents. Uh, and then we kind of get an idea of what Wyatt Walker was there to do. In fact, as you can see down here, it says Wyatt Walker was Burr Rabbit. Wyatt Walker is there to trick uh, people and to learn kind of what he was doing trick and why they were trying to trick Bull Connor. So that's where we left off. Uh, tomorrow we will get a lot further. Once we get into the marches, which chapter five, which part five, section five, really gets into the marches, we'll clip forward a little bit faster. So that's it for what we read today. Back to talk to you about what we read in the text tomorrow. Until then, I'll see you later. Unless you haven't watched the other video I'm about to record, and then I'll see you here in a couple of seconds. Bye.